one small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? What's up, guys? Faruqi Bros here, back with another podcast. And today for you guys, we're going to be discussing uh, an interesting rumor coming out of the Hollywood Reporter. Because of Joker's two, uh, $1 billion uh, out outing at the box office, Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix are in talks to reprise their roles uh, for a Joker sequel. So I'll give my thoughts first. Personally, I think that uh, the idea is good and bad. Good because, you know, you get to see more Joaquin Phoenix in the role of Joker. But bad because half the mystery, half the, uh, the beauty of the Joker movie was that so many things were left ambiguous and left up to chance and left in a mysterious fashion. Like, you know, did it even happen? How much of it was in Arthur's head? These are the kind of things you lose because if you're doing a sequel, you're going to have Joker there full time. So it's kind of weird. At the same time, I do know that uh, Joaquin Phoenix hates doing sequels. He's against it. He's a not a sequel person. But for some reason, for just Joker, he's like, for this film, I'll do a sequel. So I don't know what to make of it. But if Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix have something they want to do with the character, to have a vision, I'll be interested to see it. What about you, Zion? You know, I agree with your Joker point because they like they struck gold with this film, and um, like you said, like Joaquin doesn't usually sign up for sequels; it's not his thing. Um, but if if they do come together and it gets announced, I feel like they would only do that if there really was something special they had planned for the film and the character. So I, obviously, if it if it gets announced and actually comes out, I'll be definitely excited to see it. But um, like you said, I agree with most of your points that. I think the kind of the mystery of it and the aspect of it, like as a standalone film, I think it works best. And um, are we getting into the? No, we'll get the next part. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, I guess that's basically what I'm, my thing is that. I mean, if it gets announced, that's awesome. I don't think Joaquin and Todd will come back for something that's like half baked. They're gonna do something. If they come out, they're gonna come out strong and do something really special. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sold on that completely. So, uh, I would say that. <clears throat> Just because the first one made a billion doesn't mean the second one will. And also, I don't see where they're going to take that story. Like, I really don't see what that story looks like. And I think they're going to try their best. And sequels, they struggle. Like, sequel, all sequels struggle uh, in some way, shape, or form. So I don't see them... I don't see this one being as great as the first one, but it also doesn't mean it's going to be bad. So... um. Like in the middle area, right? I, I want to see. There's other films out there that I'm trying to trying to watch. So yeah. So I mean, do you think? I mean, we could was very briefly, but do you have any ideas? Like where where would you want if you if you were to see a Joker two, what would you want to go with it? Like, what is there left for Joaquin Phoenix's character to do? Uh, I mean, that's that's the that's the whole issue, right? It's like where the hell do you take this character now? He's the thing is they were vague enough with the ending and like how people are interpreting that movie to the point now where you can have um like the first movie could have all been in his head you know what i'm saying yeah, then they can do another crazy. crazy thing but that would be a kind of a cop-out unless you can it, find a way to would. bridge his mind and and like you make it more vague or you you, you know you go through more like some people know, have like said I'll, online that you know like i just speculation that you could set the second film in arkham asylum where Joker's kind of just sitting there and he's like maybe plotting to get out and that the whole movie is like him and Arkham dealing with like other prison patients. Prison Break? Yeah, kind of like a Prison Break movie. That, would, but, that could work, yeah. And with Joker that interacting with maybe other villains or other future like names. Like they can name drop other people in the asylum who are Batman villains like Scarecrow oh, okay. or whatever. And yeah, then, I see a film there. I yeah. see a film, but it's two hours. Like two hours of that is it's hard. hard. It's hard. It. Yeah. I, like, in theory, you could do it. Honestly, I would, lo- I would have loved to see... Uh, like, there's no way to bridge the gap between that and the Batman, but yeah, that would be hard. Yeah, that would be cool. That would, like, that would be interesting. Would be something right? that I mean, technically, you would still be able to do it. Yeah, you can still yeah. do it. It depends on how they end the second movie. Do they no, want to do a death story? Anything, this this kind of opens up. Yeah, that them doing any kind of sequel means that they have committed to more Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. And hey, if the second movie somehow makes a billion back to back billions on a fifty million dollar budget then how could you not want to mix it with a, some kind of universe? Like, uh, in this case, it would only have to be the Pattinson universe because it's not like 
Ben Affleck's coming back to face walking Phoenix, even though that would be kind of insane. But still, Loki, uh, that would be that would be even better. True, but he already had Ben Affleck already has a Joker in a sense. So uh, uh, he has Jared Leto that could be put as Robin that got slapped by Walking Phoenix's well, Joker. That'd be, that'd be, that that'd be kind there's of a way to work things out. There is, there is, and you never know if the Snyder Cut comes out how things will go. But uh, and guys, just for before we continue, uh, let's take a second for today's sponsor. So guys, today's video is sponsored by Otis. Otis is a new app that allows anyone to invest in alternative assets like art, sneakers, comics, and other grails for as little as $25. Otis allows you to invest in things that you both love and understand. The assets are meaningful, cultural items with stories for tell, rather than symbols on a stock ticker. Whether you're an art aficionado, a streetwear junkie, or a comic book lover, you can invest in and partially own something you're actually passionate about. Examples include Incredible Hulk 181, Off-White Nike The 10s, or even Nike Air Mags from 2016. You've got nothing to lose by downloading the app and checking it out for yourself. It's free after all and there's no commitment. Check out some of your favorite artists and brands on there and once they drop something, you'll be the first to hear about it. Check out the link in our description and try it for yourself. Now let's get back to the video. Before we get let's go to the second point of this. Because that's, not the, that's not the only rumor. There's a bigger rumor and that's that uh, not only did, did Todd Phillips negotiate with Warner Brothers to give him a Joker two, he also negotiated with Warner Brothers that, hey, remember that DC Black idea I pitched to you? Well, let's go all in on that and let's keep making stories about villains and how they became who they are. And Warner Brothers said no. They said, we will not give you all the villains. He wanted to do like a lot of villains. He, they said no, but he said, you know what? You can have one more villain. So, And we don't know who that is, but for, for one, one DC villain, not a Batman villain, a DC villain, was given to Todd Phillips that you guys you can develop it, not necessarily direct it, but I mean you could pick the director, you can kind of build that you, that movie yourself. Which leads to the next point: What other DC villain do you want to see a movie based off of? So I'll start with Zion. Like, what kind of villain are you thinking? You like, know, I, remember they apparently gave Todd Phillips one more villain. That's true. I think to preface it, um, Warner is taking a huge risk because. Just any DC villain is not going to get the kind of traction that. But the reason the Joker, is a the reason it's a less character. risk is because they're only going to put low budget on it. Like yeah, they're never going to spend hundred million. They shouldn't expect this kind of return because they can't compare Joker to even any other DC villain because in DC Marvel Joker is probably the greatest villain. But we know that Joker Marvel. would have been a success even if it made five hundred million. It would have been a huge success either way, right? So I'm not. I think they want to invest more in villains, but obviously not. No movie is going to make a billion, but. Man, I mean, put a $50 million budget, get 500 back, you're winning. Yeah, you know? I guess in that sense. In terms of the characters, um, it, it's tough because certain characters like are too comical where they will they will require a lot of CGI work or something like that. You can't choose Careless Scarecrow. I mean, not Scarecrow. Clayface, something like that, even though they have interesting backstories. But guys like Scarecrow where you can just do somebody like Scarecrow as like a professor and deep, deep, like, uh, deep diving into what creates fear and what fear is all about. I think that's a really interesting story. Um, you can even do like a League of Shadows, Rosal Ghoul type thing, where I'm not sure what kind of story they do with him without Batman, but there's a lot of characters that you don't need a lot of CGI or big budget type things to, no. to work with. In sure. my opinion, I think Batman's villains are the way to go, some from there, but we'll there are others that are a good choice too. What about you, Omar? <coughs> I know you're going to say Luthor, but yeah. I don't know. To be honest... <laughs> Honestly, I'm so out of it this week. Like, I feel like with the with the Justice League stuff, I've been looking backwards so much for the week that it's getting hard to look forward without feeling like that should kind of happen. Um, but you know, so even said, yeah, even yeah, though like, that happens, it's still like, gonna be movies. Yeah. Hypothetically, though, yeah, I think Luthor is something that they can look at. Uh, I know you have an idea for it. And you're gonna probably share it now, I do. but. Um, yeah. I think with that, like your type of idea, I think that would be good. I don't think you can go another route um, in terms of like that character. I think that character really, I think that way, the way you are going to put it right now, I think that's kind of the best way. Riddler is something, Riddler is someone I could see Todd Phillips like really killing it with. I could see it. I could see Todd Phillips knows how to do Gotham. I don't think they will tackle characters that that Matt Reeves Reeves is doing. I feel like anyone Matt Reeves is doing, they're not going to double up. But, you know, because if Matt Reeves wasn't doing doing it, you might be. I was thinking Mr. Freeze is also interesting. These guys have interesting, like, tragic backstories. You can, 
anyone with a tragic backstory, you can make it into a movie. But the reason I, I personally picked Lex Luthor, and I wrote an article about it for The Hollywood Reporter today myself, and uh, basically what I said was that Luthor, especially in today's kind of political climate, like having that story about this guy who picked himself up and became a billionaire and what steps he took, that could be pretty interesting. But also, like, uh, you can have Superman in the movie as almost like the boogeyman. Like, it's some kind of shadowy figure. You don't even have to have Superman physically appear. But if, like, the, the idea of Superman tormenting Lex Luthor and, and explaining the why of the character and why he's so obsessed with Superman in particular and really he's obsessed because internally Lex Luthor sees himself as the savior of humanity like he wanted to be the hero of the world and he never saw himself as a villain he still doesn't so I think that's interesting to see and we talk about Martin Scorsese a lot and Joker obviously is inspired by two Martin Scorsese films Taxi Driver and King of Comedy but Scorsese also directed Wolf of Wall Street which is a really good basis point for a Luthor movie. So if they're still thinking to follow that director's kind of vision, you can look at Wolf of Wall Street and say, hey, that can do a Luthor movie or The Social Network. Uh, funny enough, Jesse Eisenberg got casted for Lex Luthor because he played Mark Zuckerberg, uh, the creator of Facebook, in that movie. So these are the kind of small ideas that I think when you bring it together, you can do a very good political you know, movie about wealth and, and these kind of things, I could see that, you know, happen in for a Luthor movie. But obviously we heard, we talked about DC Black in a prior podcast, so we do know that this is something that Warner Brothers is interested in, you know, having two different universes, one being the DCEU and one being a universe that's uh, individual standalone movies that are all rated R and extremely dark. In fact, one might, one might suggest that something like the Snyder Cut could be like a DC Black movie. You know, it's even going to be black and white. So, like, like put it in that thing so where you can put it, uh, you know, where, where all the screenshots have been black and white. So, like, you know, you... Well, it's going to be rated R. The stunt team that yeah. released the... Uh, the oh, yeah, that footage there. is insane, yeah. Yeah, so, like, that's, that shit can't be anything but um, rated R. Like, you're not going to... Yeah. How are you going to take out the stabbing and all the stuff that happens with yeah, that? Yeah, quite so. literally, yeah. So, I think in that sense, even that, if they wanted to put it on that label, you could... But either way, I think it is interesting that Warner Brothers is doing something different from Marvel, where Marvel, everything is one universe. DC is saying, because of Joker, swear to God, if Joker's flopped, then there will be no such thing as a DC block. They would say, okay, Joker came out, it flopped, whatever. Because they made a billion, they're like, suddenly, DC is like, wait a minute, we have this huge storage of villains that we have that we can make stories based off of for very little money and make huge returns. So as a business person, you're going to do that. And... Because it's DC Black, then certain actors and directors who would never do a, a PG-13 blockbuster summer movie, like Joaquin Phoenix, would never have signed up for Joker if it was like a PG-13 regular movie. He only signed up because it was a small Exactly, and movie. it also gives him the, like, the freedom of the one Freedom, down, yeah. You know? So not following the comics. They sign on for multiple films. Yeah, and, and they don't follow, for, follow the comics to do whatever they want. Exactly. So... I can see it. Let's see how it goes. Uh, it is worth pointing out that that Joker, not Joker, that uh, Deadline actually refuted Hollywood Reporter's report, and they said that no, there is no Joker sequel, and there is no DC Black franchise. So both of these high-level sites are kind of saying opposite things. So again, take it all with a grain of salt, and uh, that's pretty much it. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. From myself, from Zion, from Umar, and from Samir. This is the Fruity Bros. We'll see you next time. Peace out.